Hi, this is Manos Burlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 25.5 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video discusses how to prevent and treat air embolization. Air embolization is one of the potential causes of acute vessel closure, or it can cause slow flow. What causes air embolization? There are two main mechanisms. One is entrainment of air into the manifold and the lines, and the other one is rupture of a poorly prepared balloon in which there has been failure of completely removing the air. So how to prevent uh, any air from entering the lines and the manifold? There should be very careful checking of all the connections to make sure they are tight. If uh, there is uh, pressure dampening, for example, when the catheter is against the wall of the aorta, that should be corrected before inserting equipment, otherwise air can be entrained. Also, using large devices might entrain air, as can the trapping technique in which a balloon is inflated into the guide catheter to allow equipment exchanges and removal of microcatheters if there is no back bleeding of the guide catheter after performing the trapping technique, then air may have entered into the guide and cause severe air embolization. This is an example of air into the line. If uh, this manifold is not prepared and cleaned, that air will embolize in the coronary artery, likely causing a catastrophic complication. So how to prevent it? Being very careful with the connections, there will be fluid to fluid, and then before injecting, there should be aspiration to remove any potential air and debris from the catheter. And then during injections, the manifold and the syringe should be actually held in a vertical position. By doing so, any potential microbubbles will go to the top of the syringe and would not be injected through the lines into the coronary artery. So careful preparation of the manifold and then injection, keeping the manifold in a vertical orientation can help minimize the risk of air entering into the catheter and into the coronary artery. But if, uh, despite precautions, air embolization occurs, what can be done? The first step is to give 100% oxygen with a closed face mask. If uh, the amount of air is small, then often it will pass through the coronary arteries without needing any further intervention, or there can be some transient ST segment changes. But if there is a large amount of air, then it might have to be aspirated either through the guide catheter this is called the body technique or balloon-assisted deep intubation of the guide catheter or through an aspiration catheter. If the patient develops cardiac arrest, then intracoronary epi, epinephrine can be given to help uh, the heart get back into function. And then, of course, uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation may be needed. These are some cases illustrating those principles. This is a patient with a mid-LAD lesion. And during preparation to deploy the stent, there was injection of a massive amount of air. It goes to essentially all coronary territories except the LAD due to the occlusive uh, function of the stent. And the question here is how long will it take before developing cardiac arrest? And the answer is uh, it took actually 30 seconds for cardiac arrest to happen after injection of this large amount of air into the coronary artery. And this is shown here, there was gradual hypotension followed by cardiac arrest. So large amount of air is uh, going to actually cause potentially cardiac arrest. And that's why the operator should be immediately prepared to start a cardiopulmonary resuscitation and attempt to remove the air and give 100% oxygen to re resuscitate the patient. This is another case. This is a CTO-PCI case in which uh, trapping was performed to exchange equipment, but there was suboptimal clearance of the guide catheter. And this resulted in this massive amount of air embolization as well during injection after trapping was performed. So back bleeding is critical after trapping. There is a separate video 8.4 about how to perform trapping, which is an essential technique for both CTO and non-CTO PCI. But again, the key concept here is that trapping means that a balloon is inserted next to the 
guide wire that we want to maintain in place. The balloon is inflated and then the microcatheter is removed. But as the microcatheter or other equipment is removed, what can happen is air is going to come into the guide catheter. And that is why at the end of trapping, after deflating and removing the trapping balloon, it is critical to back bleed the connector, the TUI, to ensure that all the air has actually exited from the guide catheter to prevent air embolization. And finishing up with the last case, this is a patient with a LAD lesion in the setting of anterior ST elevation myocardial infarction. This was a balloon and dilatable lesion. Body wire was used uh, using a microcatheter. And then uh, during uh, repeat balloon inflations, there was balloon rupture causing no reflow. Um, likely because of poor preparation of the balloon, although it could be in part also due to dissection. In this particular case, 100% oxygen was given, uh, a stand was placed, vasodilators were administered, and the patient uh, did well. So to summarize, air embolization can happen if there is poor preparation of the manifold and the lines, and that is why it is critically important before every injection and after every insertion of guide or insertion and the removal of equipment from the guide catheter, especially when using the trapping technique, to ensure that the line is clear of air. Also, when using balloons, it is important to make sure that all the air is removed from the balloon. So in case of the balloon ruptures, there is no air embolization in the coronary artery. If air embolization occurs, 100% oxygen is given, that helps actually with absorption of the air that has been injecting into the coronary artery. If the amount of air is large, then aspiration air removal might be needed through the guide or through a thrombectomy catheter. Intracoronary epinephrine can be given or cardiopulmonary resuscitation might be required. Thank you.